What's going on guys, Victor here, and boy oh boy do I have two really cool episodes coming up for you guys. Now, Brooke and I took a trip down to the Florida Keys, fished with our good buddy Sam, went offshore to try to tackle some swordfish. I was originally only going to film one video, that's why the intro at the fillet table here. If you guys are following me on Instagram at Landshark Outdoors, you guys will know that there's a very cool collab coming up. Not going to give it away, but it's a very big YouTuber who you guys have requested us to collab with a lot. Just saying that. I got a bunch of fish to fillet. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you guys out on the water. But on the way in, we are going to deep drop for what, Sam? Queen Snapper. Excited? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Bean and Chase are setting up the deep drop rig. It's basically a giant chicken rig. We got three, four, five hooks on it. With some squid, you drop it down, and we're after Queen Snapper, which you guys will see in a little bit, I hope. Push this down, pull back on the spool, and he'll drop it, and you'll just lightly hold your thumb on it. Go ahead. Out here, between 700 and 900 feet of water. And uh, we're dropping down a three dropper rig, some circle hooks, a squid, and uh, kind of bouncing bottom open for a queen snapper bite. Cool. What's the Good biggest one. one you got out here? Uh, it was actually last year. I think he was, quote me on this, probably 15 pounds or something. Ooh. So go ahead and just put light thumb pressure on there. This is your first time deep dropping too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I've never done it before. Or using an electric reel. I've never used an electric reel. There we go. We got a queen on. Nice one. Jesus, I looked over and the rod's like, <laughs> That place stays on there first. You're uh, working hard there, Eric. Working real hard. That was the best flick up I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. Anybody who thinks it's cheating to use an electric reel, I invite you to come out here in 800 feet of water and do this all day hand cranking them. With an eight pound weight. With an eight pound weight. Looks like a nice queen. Oh, nice queen coming up, yes. baby. Ice cream, real, 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 real. Oh my god! Oh, yeah! Oh my god, the colors are sick. Look at the colors on that thing. Beautiful. These look good. Beautiful fish. Do you whip them or no? Wow. What do you think about hey. that, Sam? It's awesome. The colors are crazy. Look how easy that hook just falls out. So it's like, there, good job. Giant goldfish. That's one of the coolest things. See why I tell you to slow the reel down? That's the hole it wears in their mouth, that hook, because they're sitting down there thumping, thumping, thumping. I mean, if you stop, the hook just come right out. Yeah, so. Very soft mouth, like you said, right? Yeah, pretty Those fish, like a big goldfish. Big eyeball synonymous with yeah. every deep water fish, right? Gorgeous fish. Very good eating. Pretty as they get there. What do you think? How about the colors on that fish? It's awesome. There you don't see that cool. in the Long Island no, Sound, no. do you? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Nothing even close to this. Good job, oh, Eric. Thank you. Yeah, it's dinner tomorrow night. How do you think I'm in? Ooh, he's fighting now. Oh yeah, he woke up. Here we go. Get oh, yeah. What is this, Blackton? Who knows? Bro? While we're Work deep dropping, we had Bean drop a vertical jig while Sam was working the uh, deep drop line and I think Sam might have his first tune on. It's a uh, black jig. No, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a very really tiny little, black jig. Sling him? It's really tiny, you can't yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's sling him in. Yeah. Cool, buddy. Yeah, Check that out. Look at those colors. That's awesome. Give him a sun. There you go, Sam. <laughs> Aren't they cool how they look like airplanes? Yeah, they're awesome. They're like when you look at them straight on. Oh, we got another tuna on. Don't too much. Don't too much. Yeah, I know. Let's swing right in the boat. Yep. Woo! We're on the Isle of Murata humps now. We, uh, we got the one queen snapper, but the boys wanted to do some jigging for tuna. So these are vertical jigs, and they resemble a bait fish that's just fluttering down in the water column. Be your first tuna, right? Yep. Is he, is he a lifter? Oh, yeah, he's okay. Swing it? Yep. Oh, the same size. Right. Yeah. Come here, You just hold it. <laughs> hold him, Eric. Come on. I feel like it's going to go nuts. Eric, there you go. No, no, it's okay. You're fine. Give him a good squeeze. There you go. There you go. Okay, she flipped this on nice one. We got my boy Sam hooked up on a black thing. The you said you never had blackfin sushi before, right? Never, no, I'm excited. That's gonna change tomorrow. Yeah. We got queen snapper and blackfin for dinner tomorrow. This one goes a little bigger. Put the right in the 
Every time I see them, they just look so cool, don't they? They yeah, are so cool. Especially from this angle, straight ahead. They're just like, their fins are so unproportionate to their body, aren't they? Yeah, they're huge. And they, they don't have as long as they are. fins in, they stay out like an airplane. Yeah. And then when they want to go fast, they tuck them in, right? They're so cool. So this is what I'm doing. These vertical jigs, fast and aggressive, through the water column. We got to get Dad in on the action, too. Good swordfish right there. Yeah. Keep the belly for that, right? There you go. Hopefully I'll catch us a swordfish next time they come down. So you'll take this section, right? The belly and make it into a sword bait? Yep. I'll cut the uh, belly out here and I'll cut the strips off the side. So back at the fillet table, big shout out once again to Sam. We're going to big make a big dinner for them and his friends later. And this is one of the fish we caught and one of the prettiest fish you guys can catch in the Florida Keys. And the cool thing about all deep water fish that you catch in 800, 1,000, 1,500 feet of water is big eyeballs. You guys see that pupil? The reason they have such big eyeballs is to allow as much light into their eye as possible because you got to remember, it's pitch black, if not nearly, you can't see anything down there. So every little bit of light helps. And that's what you always see with these deep water fish is that huge eyeball. Into the head, around the pec fin, just like that. And these guys have super big scales. Today I'm using a six inch Dexter curved boning knife. We're gonna take the tip of our knife and just work all the way down to the tail. Okay, once we get from the tail, now we're gonna work back up towards the head, making sure I'm on the spine at all times. All the way to the backbone. Break through the pin bones right here. Other side of the backbone. And over the rib cage. Snapper always have real big rib cages as well as grouper. And there you go. How about that? Tell me that's not a pretty looking fillet of a snapper. Beautiful fish and beautiful fillets off of these fish. Check that out guys. Look at how pretty that is. Beautiful snapper. And I'm always happy when we catch them because we don't have a whole lot of queens out here in our local waters. So these guys are a real treat when we get them. So now we have our queen lined up to the edge of the fillet table. When we skin it, we always start on the tail side and work our way up towards the head. Nice sharp knife, makes it very easy. And voila, look at that. These fish got some thick scales. Look how stringy that is, it's like an accordion. <laughs> but so pretty. I mean, look at that. That just shows you how beautiful nature is. To think that something in 800 to 1,000 feet of water lives down there with these kinds of colors, you'd expect it in, you know, a tropical reef, but down there, it's just amazing. All we got left to do, snapper always have pin bones, which run about halfway down the length of the fish from the head to the tail. So we just take our knife, go on one side, the pin bones, the other side, And there we go. Now, Sam, your dad, friends, I hope you guys are ready for a good snapper dinner. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Now, as we wait for Sam, his friends, family members, my dad's coming as well, I'm gonna whip up a little appetizer that Brooke and I love to do. Basically like make a tuna poke style and put them in these wonton cups, which Babe whipped up in the oven. Thank you very much, Brookie. And so what we got going on here, this is the black fin cut up into a bunch of little cubes. Diced up, we got scallion, we have cucumber, as well as two avocados somewhere hiding down there. So what I'm gonna do is, we got sesame oil. That has never been opened yet. Sesame oil. That much sesame oil. We're gonna do a little bit of heat. 
Where did that shoot to? It sounded like it hit the ceiling. Do you I see it? I hope it didn't hit the ceiling. Oh, it hit the garbage can right here. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. We're gonna do some sriracha. Rice vinegar. Get some acidity in there. Now we're gonna add some sesame seeds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a mix. I'm also adding some soy and eel sauce, but we have a guest tonight who's gluten-free, and believe it or not, soy sauce has gluten in it. There are variations that have gluten-free, which he's bringing over, and I do not want to ruin his night, because having a food allergy would suck, and uh, you gotta be respectful to that. So we're gonna pre-mix this, and we're gonna set some aside for him, and he can add the soy, or the gluten-free soy. Looks like we're a little low on fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could cut up some more fish. Let me do that real quick. We set some aside without any gluten. So we got you covered, Eric. Now, we're gonna add some soy. Completely forgot. Eel sauce. Now you might be thinking, why didn't you put eel sauce in Eric's? Eel sauce has soy in it, and soy has gluten. So, we're gonna add some eel sauce, and eel sauce is delicious, sticky, sweet, and just very good. It's always a crowd pleaser. This is literally the most simple little appetizer you guys can make with those little football tunas. You know, you might look at those little football tunas and say, what the heck am I gonna do with those things? But you get creative and make little appetizers like this. They don't have big fillets on them, so they're not the best for serving as far as like a fish steak or something. But doing things like this is Great, add some rice to it, eat it as a poke bowl. Delicious. Now, we're gonna pop this in the fridge. These are just absolutely beautiful fillets. We got eight people, cut up the two queen, the one queen snapper into eight fillets, and everyone's gonna get a good six ounce piece of fish. Now hear me out, this is what we're doing. I'm gonna be making like a coconut cream sauce, which you guys will see in a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna season the tops of our fish. So this is the prettier side. The back side always doesn't look as good, right? That's where your bloodline is, that's where the scales were. So we're gonna season the top with some garlic powder. Freshly ground black pepper. Well, it's a mixture of peppercorns. Some pink Himalayan salt. I sense I take the skin off because I don't know how people feel about skin and I have people coming over who have, I've never cooked for. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take the queen snapper, the pretty side first, dip it into the cornstarch, just like this, okay? We're only gonna do one side. We're gonna pre-cook them two thirds of the way on this side as if we were going to pan sear them. Then we're gonna take the uncooked side, the bottom side, put it in our sauce and let it poach and just boil in there. And it's gonna be, you get the, the two dimensions. You get the crispy top, and then you get the very just juicy, flavorful coconut cream sauce underneath. We got the big paella pan, because since we got eight people and I wanna be able to lay all the fish in here, it's gonna look real pretty. We're gonna get all these flavors together. We got tomato, zucchini, basil, shallots, garlic, ginger, all sorts of stuff going on. Pre-cook the fish and I decided to cook outside because we got the outdoor burner, bigger surface area, got the nonstick pan and have some sunflower oil. Okay, we're gonna let that heat up just a little bit and everybody can say hi. Hello. <laughs> so we got Hillard, which hi. is Sam's dad, Sam, Stacy, which is Sam's sister, Eric, and Frey. Hi. <laughs> so, and we're waiting on your dad. And we're waiting on my dad. He got stuck in traffic, so we're just waiting on that. Okay, oil nice and hot. Now, the nice side, the seasoned side in the cornstarch, straight down.
See, that's what we're going for. We want a nice, crispy, browned exterior with the cornstarch. And when you were young, was it Czechoslovakia? I that's love really good. Little, really good? Little mm -hmm. little Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Paella pan, olive oil nice and hot. We got some shallots. As well as garlic and ginger. Okay, so we're just gonna wake up the garlic and the ginger and the shallots just a little bit, 30 seconds or so. Now we're going to add some zucchini. Six uh, Roma tomatoes. We're going to add some water. Some black pepper. Salt. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes are softened up, zucchini softened up, all the flavors are together. Now we're going to add our coconut milk. The last and final thing as our coconut milk comes up to a boil, some basil from Brooks Basil Garden. And by basil garden, I mean the plant outside of our house on the front porch. Hey, I keep him alive. Here we got the pre-cooked fish going in our coconut bath. We're going to let the bottoms of those fish cook in here. I have a funny story with that one. All right, Sam, we got jasmine rice. Now, I'm gonna give you this piece of fish. Look at this, you got your coconut cream sauce on top of your queen snapper. First time you're ever eating queen snapper. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. No bones here. No bones. Everybody, cheers. I hope you enjoy and thank cheers. you for coming. Cheers. Thank hey, you for having me. Cheers, cheers yeah. to the people who caught the fish and the people Great who caught the fish. Cheers. Nice to meet you, Topos. Actually, the epoxy that you can buy, there is That's so really many good. different yeah? brands. Oh, I'm sure. And some of them have it's very, so good. very, you know. What do you think, Sam? So, so good. Thank more. you so much. The yeah. yeah. crispy part. skin that you wanted yeah. to um, achieve worked out good, too. Very good. good. It's mm, amazing. So good with Five star you. restaurant. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Delicious. Am I am allowed to say I'm not a big fish lover, but I still really like it? This is proof I did not like this. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but if I could, I would lick the plate. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Delicious. What do you think, Stacy? It was really, really good. Mm. Very good. How good was it? I love it like always. <laughs> Delicious. You. you made it so oh, how could it not be? It was. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a good joke. <laughs> Come on, that's worse than that. How about that? Eric, it was amazing. Thank you. No problem. I, weren't you the one who caught it? Kind yeah. of. So there we go. We gotta thank you. <laughs> He's the best button pusher in town. <laughs> it was really, really good. I loved it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys all thank for coming. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for inviting. No problem. Yes. And, and seriously, big thank you to the Warm family, especially Hillard, because Brooke and I wouldn't have got to go on the charter if it wasn't for him. We so. had a great time with you guys. You're awesome. Pound it, Sam, you did good. Thank you. You did too, Eric. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> so I will see you guys in that next video. See ya.